Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created of Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on updating our code to support multiple encounter areas for our game. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There'll also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. To add in our special tile logic, before our player moves and we're doing our check to see if our player is entering into one of our encounter areas, we're checking which tile our player is going to overlap with. To add in our special effects, we'll want to check our new property on our tile object to see if it has our tile type and if it's set to none or grass. If it's set to none, we won't do anything, but if it's set to grass, this is going to be our trigger to show our grass image game object and to play our sound effect for our player moving through our grass. Besides this, we'll also need to add in logic to handle when our player leaves an encounter area. That way we can hide those image game objects and our player won't be appearing to move under them. So to get started with our changes in our world scene, let's go to our handle player movement and encounter zone method. We're just going to add a return statement at the top of our method, so we'll be able to test without going into our battle scene. So for our special tiles, we'll want to be able to dynamically create image game objects and add them to our scene. In order for us to reuse those game objects, we're going to use a phaser group. So to add in this group, let's go to the top of our class. Let's add a new property. I just want to copy this here. Let's paste it. For our property name, we're going to call this special encounter tile image game object group. Now for our type, this will be our phaser, our game objects, and then our group. Now we'll come down to our init method. Let's initialize our value. So we'll have this, our special encounter tile image game object group. We're going to set it to be undefined. Now we'll come down to our create method, and at the bottom of our method, we'll create our new phaser group. So after our dialog UI, we'll reference our new property. We're going to set that equal to this.add.group. And now we're going to specify our class type for our group we like to use. So for this, we'll do phaser, we'll do our game objects, and then we'll do image. So what we did here is when we create a group game object in phaser, we have the option to pass an additional configuration. This object has a number of properties that will be applied to our phaser group, and one of these is our class type. When we pass in this property, phaser will use this class when it creates instances of our game objects to add them into our group. So by default, our group will be empty unless we provide an array of children to it, and we're able to dynamically create new game objects by referencing our group here. And when we do, phaser will handle creating a new instance using this class type. Now that we have our group to keep track of our dynamic game objects, now we need to come back down to the bottom of our class. And once we've detected our player is going to move into one of our encounter areas, we need to use this tile and then do that additional logic. Instead of adding that logic to our handle player movement started method, we'll make a new method to have this logic. So let's get rid of our to do, and we're going to call this, we're going to call this handle encounter tile type effects. And so for this method, we'll pass in our encounter layer that our player is going to enter, the tile our player is going to overlap with, and then our current player's direction. We'll do this, our encounter zone player is entering, our encounter tile. Now we'll do this, our player, and then we'll do our direction. So now let's add in our new method. I'm going to copy this here. We'll add in our private method. Let's add in our three arguments. So we'll have our encounter layer. We'll have our encounter tile. Then we'll have our player direction. Now for our JS doc types, our encounter layer will be our phaser, our tile maps, our tile map layer, our encounter tile will be our phaser, our tile maps, our tile, and our player direction will be our custom direction. So now in our method, we need to loop through our properties on our encounter layer, and we want to find our property for our tile type. This will be similar to when we do our area ID lookup for once our player is in our encounter zone, and we're trying to find which monsters spawn in that area. So if we go to our handle player movement and encounter zone method, let's copy our logic here before we get our encounter area ID. We'll come back down to our method. Let's paste that in. So let's update our variable name. We're going to call this encounter tile type. Now we'll take our encounter layer. We'll replace which layer we're interacting with. We grab our properties. And now we want to find our property where it's not our area, but it's our tile type. And also for that variable, our type should be our encounter tile type. Now that we have our property, we can add in a switch statement and iterate through our various cases. So we'll do switch, we'll do our encounter tile type. For our first case, we'll have our encounter tile type, and this will be our grass. Let's add in our break statement. Now we'll do our case where we have none, we'll add in break. Now we'll add in our default for our exhaustive guard. 
So now for our cases, when our encounter tile type is none, we don't need to do anything in our code, but when it's grass, we'll want to play our sound effect for moving through our grass, and now we'll want to show our image game object in that location. So let's do our sound effect first. We'll do play sound effect. We're going to do this for our phaser scene, and now for our audio asset keys, we want to do our grass. And since we're playing our sound effect here, we can remove that from our other spot in our code. So let's come up to our handle player movement in a counter zone method. Let's remove that line of code. We'll come back down to the bottom of our class. So now for showing our image game object, we're going to want to use our phaser group to create our instance. To do that, let's make a new variable, do const. We're going to do object. We're going to set equal to this. We want to do our special encounter tile image game object group. We're going to call get first dead. What the get first dead method does is this is a way for us to reuse our game objects from our phaser group. When we call this method, it's going to scan our group for the first game object that's not active. And if one is found, it's going to return that instance to us. So now instead of creating a new game object every time our player moves into our encounter area, we'll be able to reuse our existing game objects if they're not being used. Now, if one is not found, we have the option to create a new game object at that time and then position it based on our arguments we provide to our method here. So the first time we call this method, we won't have any game objects, but then we'll provide our position where we want us to be spawned, and then we'll have a new game object get created and added to this group. Later on, if that game object becomes inactive, then we'd be able to reuse it the next time this method is called. So as an example, when our player moves to our grass tile first, we'll create our first instance. We'll move to our second tile. Our first tile is still active, and so we won't reuse it, so now we'll have our second game object. But now if our player moves up or leaves our grass area, now our tiles are no longer needed, and so we'll be able to deactivate them and reuse them later. So to make that functionality work, we need to add a few arguments to our method. First, we want to pass in true. This is going to allow us to create a new game object if one's not found. And now we need to provide our x and y of where we want that game object to be positioned when either an instance is found or when we create a new instance. For that, we need to use our encounter tile. We want to use our pixel x and our pixel y positions for positioning our game object. Now we need to provide our key of our asset we want to use. So this will be our world asset keys. And we want to do grass. And now we can provide our frame if we're using a sprite sheet. So we'll do one and we'll pass in true because we want our game object to be visible. Once we have our game object, we want to update our origin so it's in the correct location, so we'll do zero. And then we're just going to call set visible and set active in case we have a game object get returned that we've reused before. We'll do set visible. We're going to pass in true. And then we'll do set active. And we want to do true. So before we test our logic, after our switch statement, I'm just going to add in a console log. We're going to do console.log. We're going to do this. We'll do our phaser group, and we want to log out our children, so we're going to do get children. Now it's save. So now back in our browser, so after our game refreshes, if we have our player move left and right before we go to our encounter areas, we shouldn't see any messages being logged. But the moment we have our player move up, we'll see now we have this image game object in front of our player, and when our player moves through it, it appears they're moving under our grass. And every time our player goes to move, we'll see we're creating a new image game object in our group, and so now our phaser group keeps growing since we're never making any of our game objects inactive. So to fix a few of these issues, First, if our player is going up or down, we don't want our object to be visible until after our player completes our movement. And after our player leaves an area, we'll want to disable our game object so we don't keep adding new objects to our group. So for our first change, after we create our image game object, we're going to check our player's direction. So we'll do if our player direction is equal to up or down. Now we want to make the object not visible, so we do object. Dot visible will set equal to false. Now that we're hiding our game object before our player moves, we need to show that game object after our player's movement has finished. Also, after a player finishes moving, this is where we'll set our game objects to not be active if they're not tied to our player's current location. To add in that logic, we need to go into our handle player movement and encounter zone method. And at the top of our method, we want to reference our phaser group. So we're going to do our special encounter tile image game object group. We want to get our children game objects. Now we want to do for each to go through our array. And now we'll have our child game object. Now I'm just going to add in our type. And so for our type, this will be our phaser, our game objects, our image. 
And so now for our child game object, first we'll make sure our game object is actually active. And so if our child is not active, we want to return early. If the object is active, now we want to check its X and Y position. And if it equals our player's position, then we need to make it visible. So we'll do if our child dot X is equal to our player, our sprite, our X position, and our Y position. Now we want to make that visible. And we'll return early. And now if the game object is not at our player's position, this is where we'll make it not active and not visible, so we'll be able to reuse it. So we'll do child.active, we're going to set equal to false. We'll do child.visible, we'll set that to be false. All right, so when our browser refreshes, let's have our player move up into our counter zone. We'll see right away we fixed the issue with our grass, where it doesn't pop until our player is now in that position, is now we have this nice effect. And now if we have our player move through our various tiles, we'll see that our game object group it never grows outside our two image game objects since we're reusing the ones that are no longer active. We just need to fix a few other issues. So when our player moves up or down through our grass, we'll see our player moves under our image game object and we want our player to appear on top of that. So to fix that issue, we just need to check our player's direction for when we go to move and then that way we can hide our tile before our player starts our movement. So back in our code, Let's clean up our console log statement for where we're logging out our children in our phaser group. So after our switch statement, first we're going to check our player's direction. So if our player direction does not equal direction down, then we can return early. Now, if our direction is down, we want to hide the game object where our player is currently at. For that, we'll make a new method. We'll do this. We're going to call it hide special encounter tiles. Let's add that method to our class. So in our method, we don't need any arguments. And now we just want to loop through the children in our phaser group and find the first instance of where our game object is at the same position where our player is currently at. So this will be very similar to the logic we did here uh, in our handle player movement in a counter zone. So I'm going to copy that block of code. We'll come back to the bottom of our class. But instead of doing for each, we're just going to do sum. So now while we're processing our child game objects, we need to return true or false if that game object meets our criteria. So if our game object is not active, we want to return false. If our game object is at the same position as our player, we want to return true. And then for our default value, we want to return false. And then finally for our properties, if our child game object is at the same position as our player, that's going to be our trigger for making it not visible and making it not active. So let's copy this here. We're going to paste that. Let's remove this code here. And now we'll save. All right, so now back in our browser, let's test our changes. So now if we have our player move up a few tiles and we have our player move down one tile, we'll see we fixed our issue where our player no longer appears under our grass image game object. However, once our player leaves our encounter area, we still have that same issue. To fix that, we just need to update our code for we check when our player is starting to move if we're going into an encounter zone. If our player is not going into an encounter zone, we need to check our player's direction and then hide our special tiles. So in our handle player movement started method, in our if statement where we have our safeguard, if our player is not entering into an encounter zone, we return early. So inside here, we'll want to check our player's direction. And so we'll do this. If our player's direction is equal to direction down, now we just want to call our method for hiding our special encounter tiles. All right, so if we save, let's come back to our browser. If we have our player enter an encounter zone and then leave, we're now hiding our special tile and our player no longer moves under it. And so now our player should be able to move around between our various tiles and have it, the grass appear in front of our player. And as we enter and leave, we should no longer have our player under our grass. Nice. All right, so one last change we need to make to our code. Let's come back to our handle player movement in a counter zone method. We just need to remove that return statement we added uh, while we were testing. All right, so with that last change, that actually wraps up our multiple encounter areas and our special tiles feature. With the changes we've introduced here, you should now be able to extend your game by adding in support from multiple encounter areas in your game, and we can have new custom tile types that we can react to in our game code. So with these changes, we could do things like if our player is moving through a puddle of water, we could have that tile be animated. If our player moved in through different brush types, so if our player is like in a forest versus in our grassy plains here, or even if our player was moving through a different zone like snow or sand, we could have different tile effects play in our game.
So as a reminder, there is a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.